Well, hello everyone. This is Jasmine Choi. Um, we are going to have a really fun time in the next two hours. So let's start with the first performer, who you, okay. Anastasia. So I feel like master classes are like speed date. I mean, I've never done it, but it's like you just meet and you have to introduce to each other and get used to each other and you know talk a little bit. So we just met actually last night. Yes. For <laughs> coming to the concert. Um, so I know you from last night. We talked a little bit, mm -hmm. but for the audience, maybe you can introduce a little bit. My name is Anastasia Samsel, and I study with Professor Judith Mendenhall at Manus. Great. You're in sophomore. Yes, I'm a sophomore. Yeah. That's why I'm yeah. here. <laughs> Great. And what do you have? I'll be playing the Sonata Appassionata by Siegfried Cargailer.
<laughs> excited to work with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a really hard piece. It and is. I remember uh, exactly in your age, I learned this piece, and um, well, it took me hours and hours, days, to to learn all these notes. So bravo for learning all this. Um, I have many little comments mm -hmm. and, and let's see how much time we can um, have to get through all this. Um, first of all, um, are you a little bit tense? Yeah, do yeah. you feel that? Yeah, it's a difficult piece. And yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what makes us more nervous than usual? I mean, it's a difficult piece. And now we are in this spot that uh, you're playing for someone you just met last night <laughs> and that you're, you're videotaped <laughs> and um, yeah, all this stress. And do you also feel when you're under stress and, and under nervousness that your sound, a little, sound is a little bit changing and not so mm -hmm. free? Up? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I felt like um, it could open up more, but I wasn't sure if it was your normal way of playing or you're just covered up more because mm -hmm. of this whole situation, yeah. you know? So the first step would be to recognize you are tense and nervous and try to relax one at a time. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And because our body is all related, if you relax one part, for example, let's relax um, the back of the neck, mm -hmm. and then it's all connected. Now you can feel uh, it's moving on, lessening up, loosening up. Um, so let's start in the very beginning. I want you to give us this feeling of the real appassionata, furious, fiery, rather than, oh my god, I'm starting, da, 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 da. you know, mm -hmm. give us more, <sighs> you know, forget about all, all of us, <laughs> and all the cameras. <laughs> sudden totally different scene begins mm -hmm. right and when we play things like this uh, meaning solo flute the rests are so important mm -hmm. you know in this when, when after you finish this first phrase there's one quarter rest and in this one quarter rest the whole world is changing you know you have to give us the most expressive rest Silence, most expressive silence. And in this one beat, it's like, and then totally something else comes in. Yeah? You, you have to show us the magic. Um, so do, do the beginning again. Just da 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 one, two, three. Da. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I could play every note, <laughs> but um, don't mind all the notes, but um, listen for the atmosphere. <laughs> so. Taking a 
tension of the silence? Mm -hmm. oh, no, no, no. <sighs> no. It's never, music is never in three or in two, four, in five, you know? Music, you have to play in music, not in three, you know? So, um, let's just play. Da -da 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 -da. register and so on but I, I've noticed throughout the whole piece whenever you have more notes mm -hmm. your sound is closed up you know why is that <laughs> even if it's forte and third register you know mm -hmm. it's something I've it, it's a challenge I think it's because I'm nervous and I tense up mm -hmm. like yeah saying. that's the first step you know to to mm -hmm. know it's happening and um, second step is now how how to fix it um, a lot of us, when we play something difficult or a lot of articulations, the sound is gone somehow, you know? It's, it's a common symptom for all of us. Um, let's take it slower so that you're not panicking and you're not really nervous about the, all the notes. Um, from there, from the 16th note, just focus on the sound. And I want you to play the dynamic what's written and open up more. <laughs> Practicing for the fingers, mm -hmm. but same thing actually applies for the sound as well. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot play slowly with a good sound, mm -hmm. then you cannot play with a good sound faster tempo. Yeah. So work on it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want you to to um, put too much time now here. But mm -hmm. let's move on. But that's a good way to practice. Okay. So uh, yeah, let's move on. Da -da -da -da. Much larger um, flute in general. We 
I mean, comparing to other instruments, we, we're not the instrument who's got the most dynamic range. So we have to really work on how to play soft, soft as possible mm -hmm. and large as possible. And within this range, we have to really um, take advantage of it. And let's see. Vibrato can come later. Um, it vibrato creates the illusion of the dynamic and the furiousness, but it's it's not changing the dynamic itself, right? So try when I just play it slowly, but I want you to play like this, not like kind of forte, but this kind of forte, yeah. Every four to sections, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on. So remember that, what you just played, yeah? that sound. can change a lot of atmosphere. So here, what I heard was It could work in some other phrases and then some other pieces. Um, but for now, uh, practice purpose, put as little vibrato as possible. If you put everywhere red lipsticks, you don't even recognize it. So um, try this section, no vibrato, and piano. Let's move on. That would be 
Fortissimo has the same kind of uh, mm -hmm. sound or a vibrato, so you have to know what kind of context you're in. Yeah. So uh, from there. subito, pianissimo, and then back to mezzo forte, yeah. you know? Um, it's also because I know this piece, you know, they know this piece, you know, we all know there's a big forte and then pianissimo, that's what we're expecting. <laughs> so this is David, and yeah, introduce yourself to us. Hi, I'm David, I'm a freshman flute performance major at NYU. I study under Keith Underwood, um, and I'm going to play like the Bach Partita in A minor. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I don't know why, I just, I, I like, felt too ner. I felt, like, nervous. Oh, we didn't feel that, did we? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> oh. I didn't. <laughs> I thought, oh, he's not nervous, he's playing, really. Yeah, I don't um, know, like, I was, like... Okay, but other than that, in this piece, what's your challenge, and what's your take on, you know, this whole atmosphere or style or um, thoughts well um like i know that there's like a baroque inspired like interpretation mm -hmm. um although like i mean i play baroque flute uh mm -hmm. i i just feel like there's like a difference in instruments Okay, so what would you play, how would you play differently on the modern flute? And Probably instead of like ornamentations, there would be vibrato, which would act as like an ornamentation. Because like the original purpose of ornamentation was like to sustain, because I mean instead of sustainment, because there wasn't, like the instruments couldn't really sustain, so. Mm -hmm. But like now we have, like I guess vibrato could come instead. Um, so apart from vibrato and um, ornamentation, what else would um, you play differently? What's the style? Uh, it's Baroque, uh, a dance, an allemande. Mm -hmm. So it should have like a metered pulse. Mm -hmm. um, probably take less time on the breaths. Okay. Um, and get a better sound. Oh, you always need a better sound. I mean, uh -huh. not better sound. You always need the best sound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay, I'll, I'll start giving you a hard time. <laughs> what I wanted to say is that um, we cannot play the same way we are all the time in every piece. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, we should play differently every piece, uh, and depends on the phrase depends on the context, and in this regard, I wanted to hear more Bach. <laughs> I heard almost every note, yeah. and you play it every correct rhythm. <laughs> There's only the same rhythm. But I need more than that, and that's my question. What would you do more in order to sound like Bach? I mean, I know it's Bach because I know this piece. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, how are you going to create this atmosphere, this feeling, this style, and flair, gesture? Probably with, like, make it more unequal. Unequal? Yeah. Okay. Like, in Baroque music, you have, like, something called, like, like, in, in the French school, it would be, like, I think it's called, like, Inigal. Inigal, yeah. Maybe like swing it. I don't know, like release, re release, release the the weak beats. I'd say maybe. I maybe love not. that you have many thoughts. I don't know. know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Keep coming, you know, letting out. Um, listen, what I heard was more or less, uh, if I exaggerate. <laughs> You know, it could be a um, modern composer just written yesterday. It could be. Or, what about something a little bit different? It's more light, I would say.
say. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I guess, just more like, um, yeah, it's like lighter. I, I would say phrasing. Oh. I would use uh, that word. Like, like the, yeah. I guess it's more rounded. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like jagged, like, mm -hmm. like it just blends. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And also, um, it's not just light or round. It, it's it's good, but it should it shouldn't just be rounder and lighter. But it should come from interpretation. What kind of chords? And there should be a reason and logic behind it. You know, don't just play da 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 da, da or okay, I play I'll play lighter or warmer. You know, mm -hmm. not that. It should come with the thinking. So uh, it's a partita, uh, it's for a flute solo, mm -hmm. but you have to always imagine what's behind, what's underneath. If there's a piano, harpsichord, tremolo, or strings, what kind of notes would they play? Mm -hmm. And I want you to figure out every note and every chord, chord changes, but um, when you keep playing, you will be able to figure out the slight change of the color. Mm -hmm. And if you notice that, in this piece, the rest of it will you know, follow by itself. So in this piece, I tried not to look at the music so much because, you know, as you see, it's pretty much same rhythm, more or less. And it makes us kind of stiff, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a mental trick a little bit. But then when I come out of the music, I can feel the chord changes and the, uh, where the color should be moving and so on. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you memorize this first movement. Um, like not all of it. Um, but try a little bit in the beginning and just try first um, to listen what's underneath and try to imagine uh, how the chords are moving and so on. So try, try as long as you can. Yeah. and the phrasing, mm -hmm. but now what I want you to do is to sit down and analyze now so that you don't breathe in a weird place in the middle of the phrase, right? So have a look. So Yeah, I, um, I just didn't take a big enough breath. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there are places to breathe every bar, you know, but there are places you shouldn't. I mean, I would rather not. So, look here. And then you start again. Okay. Same pattern. You have to notice, you know, this. Um, and then a few bars later. You know, and then when this is start again. Um, and then. and sharps you know it's just it not it's not just accidentals it's just uh, there are always thought behind it mm -hmm. and you have to be curious you know why this sharp is there 
and what was he trying to change, you know? And in the second half, the same pattern comes. And then a few bars later. You know, um, it's like a little puzzle, you know? It, the more you look at it, the more you find out, oh, it's the same pattern here, and here, and here, and then it's a sequence coming down, 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 up, 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 you know. Um, so, I would analyze more, yeah, chord-wise and the pattern-wise, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, shall we move on to the next sure. movement? So we can talk about other things. So you have to always imagine, even if you we're not dancing while playing, mm -hmm. one, two, three, one, two, three, one, what's the dance move? One, two, three, one, two, three, yeah, yeah. slow waltz kind of the uh, steps, um, it's current by the way, but um, if you imagine this dance move, one, two, three, you wouldn't play you know, I want you to imagine people uh, dancing with this rhythm uh, in an elegant, noble way, and it doesn't become, you know. Rather than yeah, and then in the end as 
well, I hear a you know, keep it short. you know, the nuances, feelings, atmosphere. I can, I mean, people can tell you to take time here and shorter here and, you know, do this and that. But if you actually have it in your own by listening a lot, this will just fall into the right place, mostly automatically. You know, it's like learning languages. Um, if you listen to a lot of I don't know, other foreign languages like, I don't know, German for example, or French, you know, just listen to them a lot and then you get that feeling, what sounds natural and what sounds like this person is speaking this language as a second language, third language, you know. Um, music is the same. Uh, if you don't know what sounds like most authentic, or if you don't have it yet, it can sound like a really nice copy where uh, it sounds like he's trying to sound like the native, mm -hmm. you know, instead of, oh, his native, you know? You should sound like, oh, he's, he's got all the Baroque flair, you know? Mm -hmm. You should get, you should try to reach that level. Mm -hmm. And this can come more or less easily with a lot of listenings and these days it's so easy to get all the recordings everywhere for free just a click away so this would help a lot right mm -hmm. um, so we'll finish up here and bravo thank, thank you, you. <laughs> my name is Julie Park I play flute. <laughs> I go to um, Manhattan School of Music, study with um, Professor Linda Chesses, and I'm first year masters. Oh, already master? Yes. You look so young. <laughs> the old dream. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and what are you playing today? Uh, I'll be playing the excerpt from Daphne's Apoli. Okay.
and there's a conductor feeding for us. There's other colleagues playing together, but excerpts, you know, we play for audition, you know, there's nobody conducting you, playing with you, and uh, when we play excerpts, it's always in the audition setting. Mm -hmm. So it's already so intimidating, and um, nobody's counting beats for you when you're holding the long notes, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, but still we have to live with it, this reality. Any audition coming up soon? Uh, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Hopefully not so soon. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's go from the beginning. Um, it's tough in every way, in every bar, mm -hmm. right? From the scale up. Um, let's start from the scale up. And, um, let's, in general, it was very good, beautiful, but I just want to create more, even more. should sound easy. <laughs> we all know how difficult it is, but we have to get to that level that it sounds so easy and so magical and fantasy-like. Yeah. So how are we going to do that? And why um, does it sound difficult? I mean, apart from it is difficult. It's fast. <laughs> okay, going up. Mm -hmm. It might take, um, it's hard to connect every note mm -hmm. and because we're all closed up and it's going to the third register, um, the sound is not so easy, um, how to say, um, instead of, we're like, you know. We tend to sound like I play E sharp, by the way. <laughs> but we have to get to the level to one. And I used to practice um, octaves like. should be your goal, you know, this exact sound quality. And then move on to nice. It should be always like this, right? Even with the notes. A bit slower. so much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should aim for that and try to connect even better in the scale.
from there, the dynamic is much less. Yeah. Can you try that? this feeling that it's, it's actually very gradual you know don't try to play so exact but no I shouldn't say that it should be so exact mm -hmm. but it should sound like it's a fantasy you know mm -hmm. Whew, it's, a, it's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a difficult level to reach <laughs> for, for everyone you know um, try it exactly the rhythm but it shouldn't sound like a, <laughs> a machine oh my god so Thinking, um, you're 
You're playing everything was written beautiful. But uh, what I'm missing is the depth. And how are you going to reach that? You know? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, normally when we say technique, a lot of us think it's about how fast the fingers and articulations can go. But as a musician, the real technique is to create exactly what you plan to play, you know? So in my head, um, I want you to play with such elegance and such depth and such heartfelt kind of feeling. But what I hear is a little bit casual, a little bit happy, you know? Um, so that's the technique we should all think about, you know? And that's actually why we practice. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to lessen the gap between our imagination, this is my ideal plane, and the reality that, you know, you're actually playing. Mm -hmm. So from, from here, I don't know if, if I can make a difference, uh, but listen to this one. notes so in, in the before as well if you play okay it's soft right notes um, pretty but we're not reaching for pretty in this excerpt Crescendo. 
have to make here dramatic and here dramatic. Here. In the beginning of the trill, mm -hmm. what do you see? King of oh, yes. <laughs> Don't scare us. <laughs> not natural you know from the trill until the E sharp mm -hmm. you have to create um, the connection you're going to that E flat so Crescendo, you know. Mm -hmm. It's um, is it slurred? Yeah, yeah, that's better. I I would use this so that it doesn't go too sharp. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the E sharp should be louder than the note before. Mm -hmm. Yeah? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you have, oh wait, oh, I was gonna go to the next excerpt. Okay, bravo, bravo, yes, you. Yes, okay. <laughs> um, Hello, my name is Ipek Karataylıoğlu. Um, I'm from <laughs> Turkey, Istanbul, and I'm gonna play Paganini 5.
let's see. That's a lot of notes. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, in in this piece, the the most difficult issue is to learn all the notes, right? Yeah. <laughs> and if you have done that, it's mm. already I would say eighty five percent. Yeah. Yeah. So not much. I can talk about not mm -hmm. too much, but mm -hmm. I still have to, <laughs> to make it even more sophisticated, I would say. So, whenever we play difficult pieces like this, or pieces with so many notes, which takes hours to learn, we tend to lose the bigger picture, right? right? So, yeah, once you learn all the notes, calm down mm -hmm. and take a step back. A look, you know, far away. What do you see? The big, the big notes, not the small notes. Like the down beats, right? Yeah. No, I'm, I, I'm, I didn't oh. get there yet. Okay. <laughs> in the beginning. Oh, in the beginning. Um, so like for you see. on every note. Yeah. So all I got was mm -hmm. you know? but you can make even more dramatic. Um, I know you have it already in the fingers. Mm -hmm. Forget about small notes. Mm -hmm. Focus on da da ba, da and then coming back and mm -hmm. then we finish. Yeah. Yeah? Try that. of this introduction, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, you should be able to create the tension. We're not just playing every note um, going up and down, up and down, but we're going to somewhere in the longer phrase. Mm -hmm. So create that kind of a boiling tension, and then and the high A, it's like bursting out, yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
play with the good sound, slower, same thing in the faster tempo. Uh, again. <laughs> to the faster articulation we're like oh what's happening with the sound mm -hmm. so um, play again with uh, original tempo and articulation extreme ways so that we can choose together okay. <laughs> in the end you choose <laughs> so um, yeah try either one maybe like shorter mm -hmm. show off his technique and virtuosity, yeah. you know, so mm -hmm. that he can stand out and play the things and, and stage, play himself, um, his own composition. Um, so, I would, I mean, yeah, it, it should sound, sound like you're on the edge, mm -hmm. or you have to make the audience in the edge, like, oh my god, oh, oh, is she gonna make it, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, but right now, oh, she's got it, you know. Mm -hmm. 